everyone. Today I thought we'd look at how you would create a water piston or maybe water elevator in your game to help your character traverse the environment. So let's check it out. Okay, so here we have a simple situation where we're going to want to help the player get to this top platform up here using a series of water elevators. So we're going to go into game objects and first we're going to create a 3D game object cylinder. Okay, so here's our cylinder. And we're going to make it a bit bigger. I'm going to try and make it look a bit more like a pipe, I suppose. Bring it down to size. And this is just going to act as like, you know, the visual cue of, hey, this is a water platform. And then I'm going to duplicate it and make the second cylinder a child of the original. So the second cylinder, let's rename it as platform. So this is going to be the invisible platform that's actually moving the player up and down when the water goes off. So let's get rid of this capsule collider and instead add a mesh collider, convex, and get rid of the mesh renderer as well. We don't want to be able to see it. So now if we move our platform, we can see it's just this invisible object that can go up and down to push the player wherever it needs to. And now I'm actually going to duplicate it one more time and rename this down. And down, we're just going to remove everything. No, it should just be an empty game object. All this does is it tells this platform where to be when it's in when the water's turned off. That's the down position. And now let's duplicate down and call it this time up. So now up will be where the platform should be. Oops, let's actually get a better angle so we do it correctly. So let's try it there. It's always hard with up. You just kind of have to guesstimate. But this will be the position this platform is when the waters turn on. So hopefully it'll be about there. -ish. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's see where up looks. Ah, it looks to be about there. So that might work. All right. <laughs> so then let's duplicate down, actually. Let's duplicate down one last time. And this time we're going to call it PS for particle system. Because obviously we need to have a visual cue when the water goes off. So particle system, here we go. And it looks like it's spitting out. So I'm going to rotate it to negative 90. And that, yeah, there we go. And that's pointed up. <clears throat> so we're going to have to do some changes. First off, as you can see, while it, the default mode needs some major changes. Let's change the cone to an angle that's a lot less steep. Let's try five. So it's a little bit fanned out, but not too much. And then obviously we need to just make the point smaller in general. That looks pretty good. We might even consider moving it up just a tad. And we also will want to have it impacted by gravity so I'm going to set the gravity modifier to 1. Now we can't see it all but let's increase the start speed. Let's try to 15. All right, now we're starting to get the hint of water-ish lookingness I guess you could say. Uh, let's actually change that angle maybe to 6. Just slightly wider I would say. And we're going to move this back down again. So let's try 12. That's pretty good. Really, though, let's do 13. And then let's just move the whole cylinder down a little deeper. So there we go. It looks kind of like it's water coming up. Let's make it slightly more narrow, too. And then we we can take the water and we'll change it to some kind of blue color just quick and dirty uh, and, and then let's go into size over lifetime and make that a bit easier to see and we're gonna take that 
and bring it down over time. So water comes out really big and then it gets smaller over time. And finally our emission rate, let's set that up to like 100. All right, so now that's starting to look more like water. Uh, obviously, I'm just using right now the default particle, and I'm not going to mess with that. If you want to have nice, cool, textured looking water, you can create it in any sort of 2D program and add it in. But if you did want to add it in, it would simply go into Renderer, and where it says Material, you can go here and scroll through and find whatever material you want. But for this, we'll just keep it as the default particle. So now we have our game object. It's looking okay but let's go into our editor now and look at the script that's going to run it okay so here's our script pretty simple actually we'll have a few variables first one is public particle system ps obviously the particle system we just made you'll plug that in there in the inspector we have three floats we'll get into what those are in a minute they're weight one weight two and weight three then we have public transform water point up that's that up game object we created water trans or public transform water point down that's that down game object we created we have a float we're going to call i and then we have a fixed update function uh, so let's talk through the function first it says i plus plus so every frame i goes up by one i is your timer i prefer using i for my timer in this situation so that's what we're using and then we're going to have a few if conditions. So if i is greater than weight 1 and less than weight 2. So it's basically saying here we have weight 1 is 250, weight 2 is 500. So when it's saying when i is between those two numbers, between 250 and 500, then you were going to turn particle effect emission rate to 200. And then we're going to turn transform position because this script is going to be attached to that invisible platform we created. The game object platform, this is where we're going to attach that script. And we're going to say, move it. So transform position, uh, vector 3 lerp from transform position to water point up. And then just time dot delta time 1. Then, if i is greater than two so it's between 500 and a thousand or well whatever number or it is less than weight one so it's below 250 so when what i is basically when it's outside of that range of 250 to 500 we're going to turn the particle system emission rate to zero thus turning off the water effect and then the transform position will be lurked from transform position down to water point down which is, of course, that down game object we created. And then we're setting it to time delta time times 4. And the reason I set it to 4 is that it kind of looks nicer. Like, when the water pushes the character up, it almost makes sense that it follows a traditional lerp trajectory, and it's kind of slower. But when it goes down, it really should just be gravity that brings the character down once that turns off. So they should fall pretty quickly. So we'll set it to 4. Then finally, we have a function that says i is greater than weight 3, so weight 3 is 1,000. Once it gets above that, set i back to 0. So you're just resetting the cycle to start over again. Okay, so here we are back in our scene. Let's go and attach that script we just created, I called teaching script, and bring it to our game object. So we have our cylinder here, and we're going to go into platform and grab that teaching script and drag it onto the platform. So here we now have it in the inspector, and now it's simply a matter of dragging all of our pieces in. So particle system is the particle system, up can be point up, down can be point down, and now you'll see weight one, two, and three are also within the inspector, so we can adjust how quickly and how often this piston works just by adjusting these values. So let's finish creating the scene and then we can do that. Uh, we'll take the cylinder and let's just duplicate it once and bring another one over here. That actually looks pretty good. And now within it, let's go to its platform and let's just change some of these values. So let's make this one go off a lot really quickly. So we'll set this to like 75 to maybe 150 
And then finally it resets at 200. So let's see how that looks. Let's run the scene. All right. So there we see that one's already gone off. And here's this one. And we see the water's pushing us up. So we can go walk over here. And then let's walk over to this one. And there we go. And there we go. So there you have it. That's kind of a simple, fun way to make water pistons for your game. I hope this video has been helpful. I'll see you guys later.